Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to be here as a guest on the traditional unceded territory of the Musqueam people. Um, I, uh, and thanks to Leone for your, for your opening. Um, I think that as far as commenting directly on the downtown east side, uh, I'm at the point in my research where I'm just working on the proposal. And I think I'll have a lot more to say about it directly, um, maybe in six months to a year. Um, so I'll leave it to these two gentlemen to to talk, um, you know, in detail about about that area. Um, but what I wanted to do, just with the few minutes that I have, is I just wanted to sketch out the broad strokes of my research interests and uh, and why I'm interested in them, and and uh, I'm excited, you know, a year or so from now to kind of report back on um, on the results of uh, of of my inquiry. So like many Vancouverites, I'm not from here. Although I was born close by in New Westminster. Uh, I was a month old when we moved back up to um, to my dad's territory, um, De Carne, from the Carrier Nation in the North Interior. Um, and I came here from Vancouver Island almost nine years ago. And it was supposed to be sort of a layover, kind of uh, just a temporary stop on my ultimate destination, which was supposed to be back home to the North Interior. So place is very important to me. Um, as an Indigenous person, I am deeply connected to the places I come from, uh, both as a settler Canadian, and, and I'm aware of how contentious that term is in the SCARP context, but um, I have no problem with claiming that. Um, my mom is from Umiyagi, which is Cape Breton Island, the Mi'kmaq term for Cape Breton Island. Um, and as an indigenous woman whose people originate in a place called the Sacred Headwaters. So I started my PhD in planning in 2011. And before that, um, I had worked in a number of different fields from treaty negotiations to, to education and then finally in, in medical education, as Leonie mentioned, in the Faculty of Medicine here at UBC. And I was really interested in indigenous governance issues and came to see the intersection between health and governance and how processes of colonization um, have produced deep health inequities from high rates of diabetes, as we're all, I think, really familiar with these negative health statistics, um, to the number one cause of death among status Indians, which is injury and poisoning. And there was some really interesting research that was starting to emerge around this time, about 20 years ago. Um, and one particularly important piece of work came out of UVic. Um, Chandler and Lalonde did research that, that looked at communities. They were really interested in looking at rates of suicide. And the rates of suicide are really unequal amongst Indigenous people. They're not uniformly high. So there are some communities that have virtually no suicides and others that have many. So they were interested in, in, what was, uh, in what this was all about, and they looked at communities that had really high levels of control um, in all sorts of areas, from fire to police to education to, uh, to health. And those communities that had high levels of control had really low levels of suicide, and those communities that had very low levels of control had very high levels of suicide. So there were some really, really deep correlations between a community's control of all aspects of their lives and, and what happened to their young people. So with this, with this information, with this knowledge, I had actually intended to become a medical doctor. That was my, that was my path, I felt. Um, but just as I became disillusioned with treaty negotiations and how that was going, I was working with the province, um, I also became disillusioned with the medical system. And although I do feel that there are a lot of changes that are happening, um, particularly in medical education, I think UBC is actually ahead of the curve when it comes to Indigenous health and education. Um, but in terms of getting to the deep roots of these health issues, I, I felt not only that I wanted, to, um, I wanted to address it in a much more holistic way than I felt medicine was able to, um, but I wanted to more immediately do this work that I felt needed to be done. And in planning, I saw a way of connecting all of these areas. Um, because health and planning, from my perspective, is about more than the built environment, the healthy built environment, although that is a crucial part of it as well. 
um, there is a bigger picture, I feel, first and foremost, that acknowledges that this land is Coast Salish land. If I, I'm going to talk specifically now about this territory that we are on, um, that it has never been ceded by treaty or agreement. And, and that now, currently, it actually comprises many different Indigenous nations who have been displaced from their own homelands due to processes of colonization. Um, So my research is, is kind of twofold. Um, so first of all, I'm, I'm looking at the dispossession of people from their homelands um, and how that disconnection resulted in intergenerational experiences of trauma, what is now commonly termed historical trauma, and, and how Indigenous community planners in the city are responding to this, um, not just through programs and services that meet immediate needs of people, but by getting to the roots of the problem. Um, and and reconnecting people. I think that the, the work of, of community planners in the city um, is really mutually reinforcing with the work of Indigenous community planning in, in home communities. And, and I say this also with a deep acknowledgement that we are also, this is the, the homelands and the traditional territories of people. Many people, Indigenous people, are traveling through their own traditional territories when they travel through Metro Vancouver. Um, but my work, my research is with the Native Court Workers and Counseling Association of BC, who work with a really marginalized, um, vulnerable population, most of whom are experiencing, I'd say 95% are experiencing addictions and mental health issues. And, and you know, unlike all of the systems in which they work, the, you know, the legal system, social services, health, um, they tend to respond to what's happening to the crisis at hand, as opposed to getting to the deeper roots, the deeper causes of, of why people end up where they do. And I feel like Indigenous community planners are addressing that and, and doing some really important self-determining work in the city. Um, and then sort of the corollary to that is, is, um, is how the city of Vancouver has responded to the needs of Indigenous peoples in the city, um, you know, specifically through its drug policies. And and also through the relationships it has or does not have with um, with local nations. And I just want to say that, you know, with Musqueam, Squamish, and Slay with you, and just to be clear, that the research I'm doing is, um, in, in that respect, is concerned with the colonial policies in a historical context, and what I think could be really persuasively be called neo-colonial policies that persist today um, at the local government level. And uh, so I'm not doing my research with local First Nations. Um, if I was, I'd be negotiating research agreements with them. Um, but so everything that I'm doing is looking at public domain. But my, my research agreement and my research relationships are with the court workers whose, um, whose own relationships extend deep into this province um, and connect, connect all of us together. So thank you very much for, for listening. Masicho. <laughs>